Bloomberg feels very much the custodian of this plot of land. We're creating threads between history and future generations. And as you would expect from Bloomberg, we're embracing both tradition, but also innovation and creativity. During the war, when the Germans bombed London, night after night, the city of London was absolutely devastated. There was nothing there, it was just ruins. A third of the area of the city of London was destroyed in the war, and that was devastating, but this was also an opportunity for archaeological investigation. And so an organisation was set up under the leadership of an archaeologist called William Grimes. His job was to go and investigate these bomb sites. The discovery of the Temple of Mithras is chance, it's a miracle. It's the last day of the excavation. The head of Mithras appears after the discovery of the head. The site was opened and 30,000 people queued up. We queued for two and a half hours, but it was really worth it. Mithras was a, a big thing because it was a temple which I'd never seen before. So I think it stimulated me to want to find out more about the Romans really at that period and what was available in London. The Romans founded London soon after the Roman invasion of Britain in 43 AD. It was the first place up the Thames where the river was narrow enough to build a bridge. There was enough dry ground on both sides to have a road network and the water was deep enough for a port. It was in September 1954 I visited the site and found a little Roman well. That was the start of my career in archaeology. This wonderful discovery of the Temple of Mithras shows that there was a little bit of good that came out of the war. Mithras is a Roman god, presented as a young man. The most common image of him is killing a bull. By killing the bull, he brings life to the world. Mithraism was a much, much older religion that came out of Persia. It was an all-male cult. It offered both spiritual advancement, but also it was a networking opportunity. After the temple was found, the, what they did do is just break up the walls so it was just lumps of stone. And then they came along and put up this total travesty of a temple in Queen Victoria Street with crazy paving and the nave and the aisles and the stones were in the wrong place. It was awful. When we acquired the land, Bloomberg felt its responsibility was to relocate the temple as close to its original location as possible. And when we demolished the building that was on the site, our priority for the archaeologists was to give them the opportunity to explore the ruins for the first time since 1954. The most amazing artefacts to come out of the 1954 excavations were the sculptures. They're the finest Roman sculpture that's ever been found in Roman Britain. In 2012, we got involved in the excavations for the Bloomberg site we were surprised by how much did survive along the eastern side of the site. 63,000 sherds of Roman pottery, three tons of animal bone, which tells us about what people were eating, thousands and thousands of individual personal finds. You could see people's shoes, you could see fragments of clothing. You're taken so much further along the picture of, of what it was like to be in Roman London. It's the closest I've got to time travel. When Bloomberg decided to reinstate the temple to its original position, we wanted to use innovation to create less of a museum and more of an experience. We got the brief from Bloomberg to make an evocative experience out of the Mithraeum itself. There's very few people who have connected together archaeology and innovation, and I think that's a big gift that Bloomberg is giving, both creating community here in London, connecting it with ancient Londinium, but also forwarding the way that people can actually experience and even think about archaeology. Bloomberg has embraced the history and the archaeology of the site. The capacity to experience the wonder that comes from picturing yourself as someone from over 2,000 years ago standing inside of this Mithraeum, listening or hearing different evocative sounds and noises, picturing yourself in that moment of time and then you're back in the contemporary London, that magical moment is what I'm looking forward to.